every child that gets bad is not good. But I think there's levels to black kids getting hit than white kids getting hit. Okay. Our parents were lethal, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you begin beating, I know uh, the Irish culture is always that wooden spoon. Mm-hmm. Fuck wooden spoon. That wooden spoon, they'll break the wooden spoon. That's a warm up <laughs> beating Zaudo well, Hard. You know? I- Basketball season has returned. What up, guys? Do I sound American? Welcome to if another. You want. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Perfectly Broken Podcast with yours truly, Mike Abs and Jennifer, aka yeah. Sinead. Hi. What's happening? So we've uh, finally completed today's Sunday. We finally completed the first week of the year. Let me start off by saying, if I can say. If I can present a perfect week, this week has been a perfect week for me regarding uh, <clears throat> getting things done, uh, everything just going so smooth, smoothly. If, if I can carry this week for the rest of the year, I would have the perfect year. Start as you mean to go on. Let me touch a wood there real quick, just in case. Um, and you know what all this c- c- came down to? And I've spoke about it. If anybody's been watching my stories on Instagram or Facebook, I've spoke about it uh, about three or four times. And it's literally just come down to discipline. The discipline of saying to myself, we spoke about it previously before as well, of just doing shit. Oh, well, I've not seen it as well. Yeah? Yeah. In yeah. which way? You're very cutthroat in the last week. Controlled? Cutthroat. Oh, cutthroat. Okay. Cutthroat. Okay. However... Yes. In a good way, you have communicated it brilliantly. Oh. You're not coming across as a prick or anything like that. So, I like it. I, I like it that you're saying that. Mm. Yeah, it's I so, like it. It's always good to give uh, positive feedback. Obviously. Well, I need discipline. That's why I work in a group. Yeah. If if you sent me off to do this class on my own, I'd sit over there scrolling or I'd, mm. I'd turn on the treadmill. And I'd sit beside it. <laughs> <laughs> just to hear the noise in the I background. Just, <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah, I am doing it. It's like <laughs> pretending to get in the shower or something like that and turning on the shower and just sitting on the toilet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I have, you know, I, I have to work in a group. Or I have to have some sort of encouragement or reminder as mm. to what I need to do. And because I'm lazy. Do you think do you think discipline is one of those things where it's optional? It's a choice that people make. Okay, I'm either gonna be disciplined or is it just in people's nature that they just they just can't be it? I think a, a lot of it is nature. What are you gonna weigh up nature versus habit? Mm. The more you get into certain habits, if the habits are not good for you you have less discipline where in those areas. But then I question I question that as well because I say a lot of the time to get in the habit, you probably have to have discipline to, to be repeating that habit. Yeah. You know? But then you can your uh, what can I say? Y- y- you can you can drop your I can't think of the word that I'm looking for now. Yeah. You can drop your defences to a certain extent or circumstances in life can get you to pick up certain habits. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, you know, there's very disciplined people out there. Um, however, they have they just bad habits choose, as well. I th- yeah, I, uh, you know, you know, I think everybody can be disciplined, but I think laziness, as you said earlier, uh, I think laziness plays a massive part of mm-hmm. it, of, uh, of hard work. Because, look, as I said, I think discipline, <coughs> I think everybody has some sort of discipline in them, but there's two choices here. You can be disciplined to do lazy stuff mm-hmm. and also but to better yourself you always need to do what's hard and can you stay disciplined enough to say okay i know it's hard but let me do it anyway encouragement helps mm. granted nobody mm. can do anything for you like like me as the example but even while i'm in the class if i have to stop or whatever i will stop until i'm ready to start again you know and obviously the, the prompt gets me to try and move again from mm. yourself um so encouragement helps i i don't think people encourage each other enough no no and y- you know what i i i think you're perfectly correct there yeah and i i see that especially when it comes to uh, uh having a private gym mm-hmm. i i understand people come to private gym because they understand okay i can't do this on my own yeah i need somebody to be there with me to kind yeah. of 
push me and uh, and uh, motivate me. But I've the more I've implemented uh, d- discipline into my life the last week. I spoke to Matt earlier, <clears throat> and I was saying to him like it's actually quite funny how easy it becomes when you look back and you go, well, for me anyway, when I look back and go, why was I not doing this? My life can be, because my life, it, it's almost like there's a structure to my life now. Mm-hmm. And for me to keep that structure, okay, I know I need to do this. Say, for example, today, before we met today, mm-hmm. you know what I was doing? Ironing. I, I was ironing. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> psychic. Like, For fuck's sake. <laughs> I was ironing because... I was looking in your window. <laughs> yeah, Mama, it's fucking freezing out here. <laughs> <laughs> let me in. I was ironing because to me... Okay, let me get all my ironing out of the way. Not that I iron all the time. I try Hate to iron, iron every second week. I, I, and this is part of it. This is part of it. I don't enjoy ironing, but I know... Okay, if I iron all my clothes now today, mm-hmm. during the week when I wake up in the morning... All I have to do is go into my wardrobe, pull something out. It won't be a case of where I pull something out and go, oh, that's a little bit crazy. Let me pull it back. Go, oh, that's a little bit crazy. Let me do you iron. know what I do? What? I know what clothes I can buy that I don't need to iron. <laughs> like these trousers, for instance, the trousers I had on last week. These jumpers. I, I go around shopping and I know yeah. what materials I can get away. So the majority of my dresses and things like that, yeah. I don't need to iron. And but I fucking go crazy buying them. Yeah, no, look, <laughs> and I think that's a perfect thing to do because I think if you if you can do anything to save yourself, like if if I'd done that, mm-hmm. I could have saved myself today two, three hours, uh, two hours of ironing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can do stuff like that, yeah, then fucking do it. Yeah, and there's also stuff in my wardrobe that I haven't worn in a long time mm. because I cannot be arsed to iron it. To iron it, yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. I'll just wear that, I'll just wear that. Especially it. for men as well. Uh, I'm, uh, it could be the same for women as well, like uh, the shirts especially oh, that you like i yeah. literally have like 20 shirts that i avoid wearing for so long for a long time because again same thing where it was like the thought of ironing that it's gonna take so long then i, I actually go, go to a point where i bought a steamer because thinking steamer was easy you just hang it you press it's not I it's, got no, one it's a well. fucking pain in the box that's <laughs> it's what that is <laughs> 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 um what else was i going to say on that my mind is gone again. I keep losing my memory. I um, got you back. Yeah, the ironing thing. Mm. Uh, what I would do sometimes is, and I don't know why, it just bugs the shit out of me. The one thing that annoys me is when I make me bed mm. and if the bed clothes are creased, yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah. the extension lid, I'll plug in the iron and I'll go across the bed <laughs> with, <laughs> with the iron. But people are going to see like your I clothes. Have, like I They're have visitors. Your bed. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it just annoys me. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I've never, I've never gone to the extreme of ironing me, me uh, bed clothes, me bed sheets. No, yeah. no, that's uh, that's too much. Yeah, it's it's more, di- it's more. Especially another thing I'm trying to implement in my life is a uh, presentation. Obviously, when I go out to the world, I want to be seen a certain way. I don't want to be because I did go through a phase where I caught myself one day just looking in the mirror, going, "What am I wearing?" Like it was oh literally God, woke up in the morning yeah. and I threw on, but it wasn't just a day. This was something that I did for. I just got lazy with myself, yeah. with my own presentation. And I was like, okay, I need to take a step back. I need to, first of all, fuck out loads of clothes and buy stuff and mm-hmm. then start uh, uh, just looking yeah, after I myself. Don't, I don't bit. like that. I don't like when I get to them stages, mm. you know, where you've not presented yourself or you yeah. don't feel like you've dressed in a couple of days. Yeah, You've yeah. just thrown something on or I hate that. Yeah. That doesn't do good. And do the, thing, good? the good thing, the, the, the thing about getting dressed is well, you feel good. You generally, you well, wake you up wanna and you want to do something. You yeah. want to make use of actually getting dressed. You don't want to be yeah. sitting on your sofa. Dre- well, I don't anyway. If I get dressed, I'm like, I'll need to go somewhere. Let me go somewhere. I need to go <coughs> out on my catwalk. But uh, no, that's, uh, that's it going back to the perfect week. This, I, I, I really hope that. My mic is broken. Uh, my mic is broken. Say hello to Are you. Are you sure? Yeah, see, so you're just lower low. Than me. Speak louder. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I really hope that. How was your week, though? How has your first week of the year been? Um, I'm still getting to grips with things. Mm. I, I haven't been. I've been disciplined in in the sense that all my Christmas food is gone. All the sweets, you all the all. biscuits. <laughs> yeah, of course I yeah. I couldn't get like. I put a bit out for the boards. What, like, boards don't eat chocolate, by the way. So I had to eat that. 
I never tried to feed them chocolate. <laughs> um, well, the biscuits, the boards eat the biscuits. So I okay. threw some biscuits out to the boards, but I had me on fair share as well with a cup of coffee. Mm. Um, so, yeah, but I can actually feel the difference in what I was before Christmas compared to this week and like all the junk that I've eaten. I've you seen know, so I've seen a difference in people. Yeah. 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 Uh, and <laughs> I've seen a difference as in the people that because I have clients that they went through the Christmas period of going, fuck it. I'm mm. gonna stay off alcohol, I'm gonna stay off food. And I posted in the group, Ian being one of them, who's lost three kg over Christmas holidays. Mm -hmm. And then I've also seen the difference in people that came in and they're like, Yeah, let's stay away from the scales for now. <laughs> no, it's not you know, it doesn't bother me as such because mm. I'm not in the same bracket as some people's bills, you know, so you, you, you can't see it. But I know because, as I says, I've just recently fit back into my old wardrobe. Yeah. So I know from that wardrobe of clothes that I'm like, no, oh, get them leggings, they're stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, there's something I was meaning to ask you also. Is, uh, so we're going into the second week of the year. And obviously, massive week for you because it's Connor's birthday. Yeah, that's I've momentarily just forgotten about that. Mm. I'm not saying it in a sarcastic way. Thanks no, no, for reminding me you. because it's just been on my mind. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or that? Um, uh, or can you overthink, overthink it? And you can definitely overthink it. You can hundred percent overthink it. Um, I get to choose what way I look at things. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, I don't feel like that I have much of a choice because it seems like my head space is being pulled either side, you know, like it's like I'm pulling it back from the dark side, mm. you know, and that's that's one of the side effects of what I'm going through at the moment. W what do you, sorry, sorry, carry on. I was going to say, what do you usually do around this time of the year for his birthday? What, what age was he go is he going? Was he going to be... He's he'll turn twenty five this year. Twenty five on the ninth of April. Mm. Twenty five. Oh, I thought it was uh, January actually. His no, his anniversary. So he oh, has nine months. His anniversary yes, is yes, on the tenth yes, yes. of January. Yes. So you're correct in yeah. that. Um, yeah, By he'll turn. He'll be twenty five. Uh, yeah. So he'll April. be twenty four years past. Wow. This January. Mm. Makes us feel old. It makes me feel real old. Oh, I was looking at my daughter <laughs> there today. I remember I was telling you she was giving out to me because I my uh, speed has slowed down. Slowed yeah. down, going up the oh, stairs. Man. She was looking at me going, what's, what's happening? Why are you moving so <laughs> slow? <laughs> oh my God. I'm getting old. What, what, what you expect? <laughs> but that's They're crazy. so brutal though. Yeah, they are. I love it though. I love that oh, honesty. Yeah. I love that honesty. I put up a story the other day on Facebook. Um, how she didn't go to her friend. How she oh, didn't I was go in to her not friend. laughing. But it's, it literally caught me off guard at the same time I was kind of thinking, oh, if for anybody that didn't see the story, it was basically one of her friends knocked at the door. I opened the door and the friend was like, can Bella come outside? And Bella came down to the stairs and she was like, no, I'm not, I, I don't want to go out. And I was like, oh, do you want to come in? And Bella was like, no, I don't want to come in either. <laughs> so I was kind of stuck in, in the door there going, well, I, yeah. what am I going to say to this little child? So it was kind of like, okay, Bella won't, won't be out for a little bit. And then Bella was like, if you want, you can call, give me a call in a little bit and we'll see. As much as, I, I, after I closed the door, obviously I said to Bella, that's very mean. You mm -hmm. should allow at least come in because she came all the way to see. But at the same time, I, it, it breaks my heart that we've lost. I, when you, as the older you get, you lose that honesty and how people take yeah. offense to it because she yeah. wasn't being offensive. No. She literally just no. didn't feel like doing anything. She wanted to chill on her own way. I'm I'm a victim of it that I say yes to people when I don't these things I don't want to do, but I just say yes Yeah, because we were nice. fucking beaten around as children to do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Speak for like, yourself. Well, I no, no, you know, it wasn't illegal to hit your child in the eighties and we got some good fucking clatters, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. slaps. You know what? <laughs> so let's go into that for a second. Punishment as a child. Which yeah. one was your punishment? Oh, it was every which way. If I was to get into it, somebody would call fucking no, social no, I, services or something like that. Yeah, so I tried some to of the hidings that I got. <laughs> oh yeah, some of the hidings that I got like would have been, you know, I, I wouldn't even speak about in public. <laughs> um, but we got hit daily. Mm. If if it wasn't so, if it was the summertime, we were we were able to get out. So we would 
be sent out and out for the whole day. Yeah. Now, and for some reason, my mom, she brought us in way before all the other kids and put us up to bed. But you could still hear all the kids out the playing. There would have been... No, how many kids in your family? Four. Oh, four, okay. Basically. Four. So I was the second youngest. So I was the youngest for six and a half years. And that was when, you know, I would have been out playing the most. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were taken in when it was still bright. All the kids were still playing out and we'd be, we'd be put to bed. It wasn't even that we were taken in. We were put to bed. Why? She not like you. <laughs> I think she just needed a break. Like when I but think then back, outside. <laughs> I know, I know, but I think she just wanted to get the whole rigmarole of getting day, us to okay. bed yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Look, you understand more as an adult, you know what I mean? Um, I, I do understand an awful lot of, and I can only imagine what we put my mum through because mm. for six and a half years before my sister Gemma was born, I was the youngest. So I had Declan and Lisa, and my brother was a bollocks when we were like as a kid you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah. and he Lisa wouldn't really do much but I was the most impressionable child and being the youngest as well yeah um and I was always looking for something to do that that wasn't correct by the way you know what I mean I was a proper tomboy so my brother if he wanted something done he'd get me to do it and you do as well oh fucking right I do it and <laughs> I got killed so many times but I was a little bastard child. Mm. I was. I was a little fucker. I would have been the same as you where uh, I was kind of in the middle. Mm. And am I wearing black sheep? Yeah. Black sheep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. Black as well. <laughs> I matched it. <laughs> black and the sheep. <laughs> but uh, my our punishment, I, I don't think it was our punishment. I think this was just for me. My dad used to say to me, okay, go out and pick a, <laughs> pick a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if I come with something, something that's not worthy, yeah, then he he go and pick a weapon for me. And I remember for a long time, you know the tires, the car tires, yeah. that rubber that's made out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he he had a. I don't know where he got it from. That's why he used to uh, whoop whoop my ass with. He used to be if I was really fucked. If if I done something really bad, it was always a it was always a surprise attack. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you yeah. know, like we'd yeah. be si- I, we'd be sitting around the table having dinner or something like that, and this fucker will have something. Obviously, I've done something. He hasn't told me about it. Mm. Next thing, I just see a weapon. So I just start getting lashes. Okay, getting whipped, uh, whipped out of it like a fucking slave. <laughs> 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 That's how I felt. But I'm watching my <laughs> vocabulary here. It's <laughs> like <laughs> marks on me back and all. <laughs> but then, if it wasn't a surprise whopping, it'd be a. Uh, so he has he have me put my hand out like that. Yeah. And you can see him that was the rolling the back, right? Yeah. But so he said to me, he's gonna. He, uh, I can pick an arm. Each, like we can go one, two, three, four. But any time I move my hand back, we add two into it. So Shit. say he say ten. When we get to four, if I pull back. Yeah. It's 12 now. Yeah. And we start again. Are you, oh, oh, so technically it went up to 16. Well, it, when it, it, if you got four and you pulled back, back after yeah, yeah, the yeah, fourth yeah, and yeah, it went yeah, up to 12. Exactly. And you exactly. started again. Start Jesus. again. Start whooping again. Yeah. That was painful. I, I remember when my little sister, Jennifer, when she had about, I think when she had about six or seven, or seven or eight, she used to save me a lot because she started crying. And whenever she started crying, when I'm getting my ass whooped, mm-hmm. when she started crying, then my dad would feel bad. Yeah. And they sent me up to my room then. But uh, yeah, that was... Uh, He'd realise... No, he wouldn't realise. He'd just stop because it's too much noise. I'm crying. The other one's crying. Uh, <laughs> so right. I'd, I'd say he came <laughs> to it? some sort of realisation that... It, he no, still beat me the... Well, he would have carried on doing it because the next time he wasn't in the mood, he would have taken it out. You know, the yeah. brutality of... It was horrible. It was, and it's not just me. It's obviously, there's. I think n- every child that gets bare is not good, but I think there's levels to black kids getting hit, then white kids get hit. Okay. Our parents were lethal, man. Yeah. Like I mean, when you begin beating, I know uh, the Irish culture is always that wooden spoon. Mm-hmm. Fuck wooden spoon. That wooden spoon. They'll break the wooden spoon. That's a warm up <laughs> beating well, Zaudo had. You know? I remember <laughs> anyway. my ma putting slippers back because the sole was too soft on them. Mm. 
I like that. <laughs> I like she that said it energy. was for more wear, but it wasn't. It was for the collectors because that's what she always said. We never, she put us to bed. This, yeah. is, this is the thing. She was putting us to bed too early. It's no wonder we never slept when she put us to bed. Yeah, because it's Cause it was too early. Did you ever do, did you ever do that where your parents would put you up to your room? And you forget that it's flow, this noise goes down says, and you start playing. Yeah. Then you hear them coming up and say, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we were fuckers we made. So we used to have a game to see who could scream the loudest. So we would start oh, off no. by, we'd go really, really low and I'd go, eh. and my sister would go, eh. and I'd go, right, it's my, eh. and, uh, so, and eventually it'd get to a big, huge loud scream. Next one you hear, ksh, 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 somebody coming up the stairs to give you a good oh, old fucking bait. <laughs> Are you still asleep yet? But there was one time, and my aunt always says this to me. I don't know how old I was, but I, in, I, I know I instigated it. I remember. Um, I remember an awful lot. I remember my first day at school and all. I remember an awful lot as a child. Mm. And um, my aunt was babysitting us, and she sat in the sitting room, closed the door, because the fire, you know, you wouldn't leave the door open. W- there was no central heating in the house. Yeah. So you'd sit in the sitting room, you'd close the door, keep the heat in. And it was the height of winter, and I decided that I was just gonna run out. I don't know what time it was. Just ran for freedom. So I just went down, and my brother's truck was at the door, and I moved that over, and I stood up, and I opened the door, and my brother and my sister—they could have dared me now. You know, I don't remember every single part of it. Yeah. But the three of us all ran out the door and ran down the roads. Where were you going? We just went out because it was midnight, and we were just ah, like okay. in our pajamas. Did you ever run away? No, child. but I wanted to run away so many times. Yeah. I was just afraid that I'd starve. I was a fat little kid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, there's one thing would be like, no, I'd be starving. And then I'd be like, no, I'd be freezing. <laughs> I actually, I, we lived in a, in a clone mall. And <laughs> this is actually a stupid story. <laughs> I remember, I can't remember why it was over, but there used to be a, the houses in clone mall park, there used to be bedrooms downstairs. Mm-hmm. I don't know if all the houses. Yeah, the four bedroom houses. Yeah, have, yeah. So they'd yeah. be bedroom downstairs, and I remember my dad. I I think I I think it was gonna hit me or gave out to me or something like that, and I ran away. Do you know where the the in Kluma Park across the road? This your man that drives the buses there. There's, there used to be a clinic there. There used to be there, there used to be a clinic there. Yeah, so Ratminton. I ran away. I I jumped on my brother's bedroom window downstairs. Mm-hmm. I only had my uh, Winnie the. I used to have a Winnie the Pooh blanket. Okay. <laughs> no, taking into good How old were you? <laughs> I, I was both. You were about fourteen. No, I was about you? fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Wait, Winnie the Pooh blanket. I had the Winnie the Pooh blanket. Fair the only reason to. why I had the, that Winnie the Pooh blanket is because we never really had any. Uh, you know, when you're growing up, you see all your friends with. When you're younger, they had the Winnie the Pooh blankets. Now, mm-hmm. we're talking when they're six, yeah. seven, or eight. I never had any of that. Oh, this. Uh, so, when I go to age where I had bare money, I bought myself oh, a Winnie the Pooh blanket. No so, way. when I ran away, when I ran away, I ran away with it. Yeah. And I ended up sleeping in the back of that. Ratminton. Rat, yeah. Ratminton on the, on the grass. I slept there till about four in the morning and I was shivering no cold. My blanket got soaked. And I remember the next day, then uh, Mary Moore, may she rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, she took me in then, and I ended up sleeping. I, I literally, no, I, I knocked into my friend about eight in the morning. Yeah. And uh, obviously with me blanket, we were like, where, where are we going with this? <laughs> and I, was, I told him what happened, and the mom took me in. I slept for 24 hours that day. I went into the bed. She put me in. I had a shower. She put me to bed, and I literally slept the whole day. Did the nobody night. think that your parents were looking for you? Was there a search party? Okay? My parents were one of those. My dad especially was one of those. We see what happens. We see, ah. how, we see how long it takes before he comes back type of dude. Yeah. Because. He w- he was like, let him test the waters himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knew that and you were, I know. It's I was young, always, uh, yeah, I was always kind of, uh, if it was anybody else in my family, probably would have went out looking for them. But with me, I always had a, I, I, underst- I understand why he was so harsh with me because I always tested him. No, not intentionally. Not tested him in particular. It was all. I always pushed. Boundaries. Are you his carbon copy? Yes. Are you both very alike? Yes. I yeah, know very, you we, still we have look a lot. Exactly like as yeah. well. That's the problem. Yeah. So there was a lot of that going on, and uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, I don't know. To this day, I don't know how I feel about my dad. What would you say to him now, as a mature adult? I know. I always said one thing. When my dad passed away, we were never the best friends. But mm-hmm. I'm always, when I reflect back, 
as much pain I went through having him as a father, I'm also always, I, tr- I, tr- I try to tend to, po- to focus on the positive. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm always, I always say to myself, it could be worse as in the aspect of that. I was born in the jungle in the Republic of Congo mm-hmm. and he went out of his way to get me to England, yeah. then to Ireland. Yeah. So if he took those steps, I don't know what, what got him to the point where he go away, why he treat me the way he treat me. But at some stage in his life, he went out of his way to, to s- almost save my life. Mm-hmm. As in did, did the whole family get treated the same way as you? No, I was, I was, uh, okay. I was always like, and this is a no. Are you thing the eldest the boy? Family. No, me, I have another brother. Okay. There's a deeper story into it, but yeah, I was always the one that kind of. And this is not a sympathy story. I'm not looking no, for sympathy with this. No. It's just it the, made the, you who honestly. you are. That's, that's why uh, I'm but asking this is, because yeah, you this have is to it. explore. This is it. And, and this is why I go so hard on uh, self-pity. Because I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people that is, I'm not trying to compare problems. But I think I just believe that if whatever you go through, it's you that makes the decision in the end of the day and mm-hmm. say, okay, I don't know what made them... If anything's made me a better person, because I compare a lot of things that I do, I've I done it because, say, for example, my father never drove. Mm-hmm. My father never owned a home. My father was bad to me. I, bu- I drive. Mm-hmm. I bought a house. Yeah. I'm great to my kids. Yeah. So I try to go, okay, I didn't have it this way. Let me try and do better. And I think, I, I, I think everybody should have that in their mind as well, that Every generation, we should improve. If you if say, for example, if you had a bad upbringing, you don't know what your mom and dad went through. Oh, I do. So you try to be a better version of them. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully the generation after you, yeah. they try to be better. Our kids should Definitely, always, you, yeah. the goal is to always make you make and your learn kids if, better. Yeah, if you feel like you're not doing something, that, like what I said even on, on another podcast as well, about checking yourself mm. and we're not always going to put our best version of us forward you know i'm going to be in the mood i'm going to say something yeah, to you yeah, yeah. and then i'll go home and i go no i could have done that better you know i, I yeah. could have i could have handled that i could have said that better and all you do is you just learn from it you know what i mean and if, yeah. apo- if an apology is needed well then go and apologize as well i don't think yeah. we apologize enough i don't think we own up to enough of our wrongdoing and I think that's an awful lot of you know my parents wouldn't have apologized to us on a regular basis mm. because for whatever reason you know they they when I look back I'm like how the fuck did Jews even handle you know like me mom not having a car all of us wanting to go shopping with her and do things with her and, and oh, she probably just wanted an hour's peace and we were all yeah. just swinging it over our morning noon and night you know what i mean yeah like that's tough work <laughs> no no you're you right know, though that but is that's why i say like tough work so you know i i get why certain things happened then we had fuck all you know we were piss mm. poor for years and i know that if somebody knows better they will do better mm. yeah, and it's not making excuses because I've seen them try throughout the years and I've seen it improve throughout the years as well. Yeah. But it was very tough when I was really... Now, I'm going to tell you again, I was a fucker, so I know why yeah. I got hiding. Do you know what I mean? No, no, it's the same thing it I was, was saying. It was very that hard. I, I was... I did test the waters mm. where... And it wasn't to piss them off intentionally. It was more like, Being why are we not allowed to do this? Mm. Why can't... It was like that. You have to be on my certain time. I'd be like... You have to be on my nine o'clock. I'd be like, about five past nine. Quarter past. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me let me <laughs> the bus let was me late. just test that there. <laughs> but I, I, it's going back to laziness and uh, not making excuses. Mm-hmm. As me and you could sit here, and I'm sure there's loads of people that are watching this that have had similar upbringing. The reason why I go hard on people, about come on, we we we've all experienced, and it's not it's not about well, I've had it worse than you or you've had it. Do you not think that we we also have a choice? Okay, this happened to me. Let me be better. So we make have a better responsibility. choices. Yeah, yeah. Never yeah. mind a choice. We have a mm. responsibility mm. to. It's not. You know w- whatever happened in your in your childhood, it's your responsibility to forgive, not forget. Learn how to walk your way around it. Yeah. Learn how to not let it traumatize you, or yeah. you know bring hold you back. And learn how, like what you say, you're doing things that your dad didn't do. Subconsciously, yeah. you're just going, my dad didn't have that, my dad didn't do that, yeah. I'm going to do those things. Yeah. And then you can, you're able to point out what your dad did do 
yeah. he got us all the way out of the Congo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the UK and then to Ireland. Yeah. You know, so that couldn't have been easy. No, no. And I tried to think, like, what did, what had him. That's the only way probably then you had to parent. You mm-hmm. know? And, and life does change. Like, back in the days, like, even us growing up, beating your kids was a normal thing. <laughs> when, I, when now, it's like, you hit a child, they can ring the guys and you can oh, get arrested yeah. for it. You know, yeah. it's crazy how life changes. And for them, our kids are probably going to look at me, my daughter's probably going to look at me and be like, they used to hit you? Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, if you, you don't shut up, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> it's true, no, but it was normal back then. Mm-hmm. So, no, but going back to the uh, people, like, I, I see on the, it's, it's actually, it upsets me how, how much sympathy people have for themselves. And they say, oh, you only see my upbringing. It's, look, it's your responsibility to do, to do better. Yeah. Like, your parents are not going to come back and for, uh take it back or you just have to fucking i found it easy just forgiving my not forgive not for, yeah forgive and forget not not forgiving him per se kind of try to understand why and just try to do better then yeah That's like if you, if you put yourself into their shoes i know well me ma would have been quite good in school i don't think she got hidings but i know that the skills they went to mm. you know it was run by the catholic church who loved the fucking bait yeah, their kids yeah, as well yeah. as an awful lot of other things which you won't go into but you know it was all about control so they came from a controlled environment mm. and thought that it was okay and that's how the country was being run so of course they were going to think that it was okay to put their hands on their kids they knew that it was wrong i know they felt guilty every time they had to do it i love how our, our conversation just <laughs> <laughs> just it's on child beatings. We, we were about to go into <laughs> Catholic churches <laughs> and the nuns. <laughs> yeah, but, sliding um, in sorry, there sorry, to sorry, what they done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it, if if you just have an understanding mm. of where they came from, um, and this obviously it's not for everybody because some people were, and then actually that's the other thing, somebody else was being brought up worse off than. You know, it's always somebody worse off. Yeah, than, yeah. Than your situation. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, that's I go back to saying that thing again. I don't like comparing problems because you don't know something so small can break somebody else. Oh yeah. You know that kind of way. So. Oh yeah, everybody's problems are valid. Yeah. You don't just minimize somebody's problems yeah, that's just the word because there, minimize. something <coughs> you know you think more awful happened to you or somebody yeah, yeah, you yeah. know or you know and. It's it's very easy. You know, I even catch myself doing that sometimes mm. and I'm just like, actually no, it's not about me. <laughs> yeah. Shh, Jen. <laughs> no, I like, I think I think the going forward, the more you kinda sit back and talk to yourself and realise that look, this has happened, that's happened, but the only person that can change the outcome is uh you. Yeah. Because exactly. they've lived their life, your parents They've lived their life. They've done their, what they had to do. You're the one that's left with these problems. And you can't keep on looking back and say, well, that's happened because of, he did this to me or she did this to me. It's, okay, that's happened. How do I move forward and do better for myself or do better for my kids or my family or whatever? Because if you hold on to that shit, you fuck up your relationship. You mm-hmm. fuck up, yeah, you fuck up your relationship. You fuck up everything. Things, everything, yeah. So Everything. Wow. So yeah, Can have some serious words with yourself. That's what I would say. Mm. You know, and be aware. <clears throat> be aware. I'm look so <clears throat> going into the second week. I'm looking forward to just carrying on where I left off this week, and that is uh, just stay disciplined. I have my vision board in my room, and in big writing, I mm-hmm. just have discipline written on it. Yeah, and it's about looking at it anytime I feel like okay, let me leave that. Saying that, there's still improvements that I need to make. Of course there's there is. Of stuff and there's I always to got to be improvements. One of them being smoking. A lot of people don't think I smoke or don't know that I smoke. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a problem saying it because I don't want to come across as if this perfect fit person, because I'm not. I smoke about six smokes a day, which some people might say that's not a lot. Some people might say it is a lot. But I want to bring it down to four or three by the end of the year. 
That's one of my goals. Mm -hmm. Another goal, I'm just going to go through this stuff that I want, I want to change. Okay. These ones are social media goals. At the moment, I have 17,000 followers on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I want to bring it up to 30,000 by, by the summer. That's nearly doubling. Well done. Put in the work. It should Very work. Very good, yeah. F is, is Instagram, I have 11,000, I think. I want to bring it to 15 because Instagram is very hard. Mm -hmm. YouTube is the main one. I have 341, I believe. Subscribers, they are. Subscribers, think, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I want to bring it to 1,000. Because when you bring it to that 1,000, that's when you start making that money, baby. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> they give you out the plaque, don't they? No, that's... that's <laughs> oh, is that 10, <laughs> That's like, a, that's like 100,000. <laughs> I thought you were going to get a 1, plaque. 1,000? No. Like, Put that up there. <laughs> no, my YouTube, the views are silly. <laughs> like, 24 views. But it's, you build. Yeah. You build. There's videos there. Dav, I, I just noticed that. I got a message the other day. Congratulations, you've hit 300,000 followers. Oh, no, 300, 300 followers. I was like, yes. I never got Oh, on YouTube? On YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we've here. That's where the, oh, on the, the videos the goes. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, I, the goal is to bring it up to 1,000 followers. So, once you make 1,000 followers, then you can monetize. And once you monetize it, then you can start making money. Right. I, you know Facebook pays people, right? You know I get paid through Facebook. No. Do you ever think why I post so much on Facebook? No. I just thought That's Mike just, just posts. Thing. Yeah. No, it's not. It, some I, people don't. And obviously, some I, post, do. I post that because obviously the business. And, but do you ever watch some of my videos as you're watching it and adverts comes on? Let's, oh, they, they phone's over there. So there's, a, it's, there's certain videos that I'll post mm -hmm. and adverts will be, or to, Facebook will tag an advert on it. Every time somebody's watching one of my videos, that advert comes on, Facebook automatically throws money. I don't think I've come across an the advert vi on The your video, video on, uh, what video was it? I can't remember. It's a video today anyway that I, I can see the video. I can see straight away if Facebook has put an advert on it. Oh, and right. then at the end of the month, I just get an email saying uh, X and X is being put into your, to your... Uh, Account to your account, yeah, your PayPal account or whatever accounts that you link up with. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do this, but this is why people, people, I, I, I'm like, especially people that are constantly on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Why don't you use it to make something? Make something. Mm -hmm. If you're saving forty euros a month, that's forty euros you didn't have. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, for anybody that's uh, looking to get into to start making money through s uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. If you don't know how to do it and you need any help, just give me a show and I will help you, okay? Jennifer's thinking about starting an OnlyFans account. <laughs> <laughs> no, put me feet up. Yes. Which you what? Put me feet up. Yeah, she's got it. So if anybody's yeah. looking for kinky feet. <laughs> hairy feet. <laughs> hairy toes. <laughs> Monster munch. Thank you so much for catching another episode and we will see you on the next one. Peace out. Bye. Bye.